Hey guys, this is Nick hailing to you from Virginia. If you're into tech, you know that there is a Raspberry Pi shortage. With Raspberry Pis, a lot of the services that they run should be run headless, and this video is going to go over how to work around the shortage for things like web hosting or Pi-hole. There is no real workaround for stuff like needing the wireless access point or the the pin controls for more advanced Raspberry Pi projects, but a lot of people just run server type applications on their Raspberry Pi, and this is perfect for that. Many of us have old PCs and laptops, and if it has two cores and four gigabytes of RAM, you can probably set up something like three Raspberry Pi services on it using VirtualBox if there's some kind of simultaneous multi-threading capability like Intel hyper-threading. The performance may be even better than a Raspberry Pi, at least a Model 3, with the right hardware. And we'll be using VirtualBox, of course, for this. It's one of those popular applications for running virtual machines on personal computers. Now, the limit to using VirtualBox to run these head headless services is that you need to start up those services on each system boot. And I'm going to show you how to automate this in Linux using this article from Pragmatic Linux. And I will leave a link to this article in a pinned comment at the top so that you can follow along if you'd like. If you don't have Linux installed on your old machine, it's super easy to install. I really like Linux Mint as far as something that is well supported, documented, and easy for new users. You could go with something else if you're a more advanced user. You will be able to, at the end of this, have virtual servers, headless servers, boot each time you start your old hardware. That way, all of those services are always running. Now, I'm gonna move the VirtualBox part out of the way, out to this upper corner, just for the next part of this video where we go over the instructions. The author of this has their own intro. They say, again, to use this basically on headless servers. And then you need VirtualBox installed, probably something with virtualization. Uh, if it's not already set up on your computer, then you can enable virtualization on most computers. He starts off by asking you to check groups. If you set up VirtualBox, you may already be included as a VirtualBox user but I'm going to check right here and I see that my user is on here as VBox users. So Nick on my machine is already set up. If your computer does not show you as a user, then you can run this command in the article right here and include your username where he has dollar sign user. Now when you run the groups command, you should be able to see that you are a VBox user, which is good. It's necessary for this next part. Now for this setup, he has gone into this directory right here, which is etc systemd forward slash system. And we can navigate in there. From here, I'm going to promote myself to super user he has sudo on all of his recommendations down here, but I'm going to do this all as root. All right, now he wants us to create a file. What you can do is you can download this directly, like so, sudo wget, and then it creates this file. I'm going to create the service old-fashioned way by typing in nano v vbox vm start service and then I will copy his information here. The one thing that's very very important to change is to change the user. In this case I'm going to change it to Nick and this creates a forking service. I think that's what the at sign does is it allows you to fork this service into multiple starting multiple virtual machines, and it should have all of the startup and shutdown information in here. Now that we're done with that, I'm going to exit. I typed in Control-O to save and Control-X to exit. 
this is the part how to do it with the download. If you do download it, you will still need to go into that file and edit the username. And he goes over how important it is to change the username because you don't use the same one as, as the author does. This next command here requires that I am outside of root. So I'm going to exit so that I will no longer be logged in as root because if I run this command as root, nothing will come up. I'll just show an example. VBox manage list VMs. You see nothing comes up because root is not included as a VBox user. Now if I exit, I can go and I can run the same command using my standard login for Nick. So list VMs. We see we have Ubuntu NC user, we have Ubuntu NC testing, we have Ubuntu NC server prod, and he goes over how to start it, but shortly thereafter, he gives a warning. If your name has a space in it, it will not run successfully. There may be a way around that with some kind of escape character, but I highly recommend following the author's instructions here and excluding any spaces. To show you how the, these names change, I will follow his instruction here, Ubuntu NC testing, and then we're going to go hyphen hyphen name. We will just change it to NC testing. This is my test server for Nextcloud. So now we can rename it, we can close it, and we can list VMs. And we see that it changed from Ubuntu NC testing to NC testing. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now we can run the command that the author has here, sudo systemctl enable vm start and then the name of the vm. So we take this command, start nc or enable nc testing. And we can see that this service should start up just fine. It created a sim link, so everything will run. If we want to check this in real time, I'm going to clear this and we can see right here the second one here NC testing is showing is powered off if we run instead a command systemctl system CTL start vbox vm start at NC testing it changed from powered off to running and that's good. That's exactly what we want. And I will just go ahead and power that machine off. I don't think that this is going to capture what I'm doing in OBS, but that's good. So everything is working as expected. I'm going to restart and touch the minimal amount of things. I won't even start up VirtualBox on my next startup. And we will go through and make sure that these servers are booted on our next load up to make sure that the services are running as expected. See you in a minute. All right, and we're back. So now that we're restarted again, I'm going to pull up my window and we should be able to check the status of the service that we created in the last section of this video. And we can see that it is active and running fresh off of a restart. So we have our virtual box here and we can see that our server started without starting the front end GUI for virtual box. Now we can show it and we can pull it up and we can see that the server is running. And I pulled it up right here so that you can see that Nextcloud is actually running and it started up automatically on each boot. So with this, hopefully we can reduce your need for Raspberry Pis as long as you don't need the hardware setups. You can completely work around the issue with virtual machines recycling your old hardware that you probably don't know what to do with anyway. With all that said, thanks for stopping by. This is Nick, signing out.